Great, so there is just another minute or so before we, oh no, it's four o'clock now. <laughs> um, I want to welcome you all. Thank you so much for joining me and Heartland Yoga for this Friday ritual. My name is Fanny. For those of you that I don't know, I was here, I believe just two weeks ago. Well, not here, but here in the Zoom sphere with you on the 4 p.m. Uh, yoga practice. So maybe some of you were with me then. Um, and there are a lot of names I don't know. So, you know, if at any point um, you want to say hi or you have a question, feel free to reach out to me via Heartland's information um, or, you know, you can find me. I have a website as well um, and look for me there. I would love to hear from any of you. So, a couple of announcements that I would like to share with you uh, for those of you that are in the Iowa City area and maybe craving some outdoor practice while we can. Um, we are doing a couple of classes over the next few weeks. I see Harriet is on here. I think it's the same Harriet. Um, was there. Uh, I work at Walker Homestead, which is a lovely event space and winery west of town, and we'll be doing yoga practices there on Sunday mornings, spaced out and lovely environment at which to practice, in which to practice. Nick was also there. I see Nick's on this call, Nick's on this practice. So I'm teaching uh, throughout for the most part between here and the end of October with some guest teachers, Betsy Rippentrop will be teaching a week from this Sunday. Kimberly from Heartland Yoga will also be teaching toward the end of or mid-October. And also, if any of you know, Consti Brown from our, she was here at Heartland for a bit and she's been in the Iowa City yoga community for quite a while. She'll be teaching the first Sunday in October. So we'd love to see any of you out there. If you have any questions, you're welcome to reach out to me and you can stay for a spacious COVID safe meal. Like you just get yourself a picnic and eat really spaciously out there. So, well, you would get the food. You don't bring a picnic. I just wanna clarify that. So that's happening. And then I'm also doing an Equinox dinner out there where it's reservation based and we'll do a yoga practice beforehand. It's a small um, limited number of people that can sign up for this event. And then there'll be a seasonal local meal. Food is grown there on the farm. Uh, to follow. So if you have any questions about that, please do reach out. And then the last announcement I wanted to make is about this, which is a book called, and a workbook called The Four Desires. And um, this is material that I have been trained in and a student of for many, many years, um, probably over a decade at this point. And I will be leading the first Four Desires workshop I've led in a couple of years, and it's happening virtually via Zoom starting next weekend and then we'll run through October. Um, so it's really, as you can see, there, there's like, there's textbooks, there's a workbook. So it's kind of part book club, part process, um, part yoga philosophy workshop, and a lot of self-exploration. I really like to describe it as taking the awareness that you build on your mat, off the mat and into your life. So looking at um, Dharma and the four desires of the soul and how we can move forward in our lives in such a way with more clarity on our purpose and really get under reveal what may be getting in the way of us moving forward so if you have any questions about that or curious about that please don't hesitate to reach out i'm really passionate about this material and um i'm happy to talk about it with anyone so today there's nothing in the chat yet just looking over so today if you didn't see in the Heartland newsletter, we will practice yoga nidra toward the latter half of the practice. So what I would like to offer you now is a little time, if you don't already have gathered in your space, go on a little hunt around the house or wherever you might be for extra cozy things. Um, I would say a minimum of two blankets, especially if you have the air conditioning on today, depending on what it's like or the wind or the windows open, maybe just a lighter shawl for the second blanket. It doesn't need to be heavyweight. One thicker blanket, one something else lightweight. A pillow would be most ideal. If you have a yoga bolster, that's bonus, but you don't have to have one. Um, so, you know, two to three blankets, a pillow, 
Um, maybe a second pillow if when you're at the studio you like to wedge a bolster under your knees you might grab that now and then lastly something to cover your eyes lightweight not an eye pillow but something like a towel or a scarf or you know one of your cloth masks that's clean something like that all right that you can cover the eyes with all right so i'll just give everybody a minute or so to go gather those things and if anyone has any questions or comments you could type them in the chat now <clears throat> Hi, Perry. Hi, Jody. Hi, Alina. Okay, yeah, there was a comment about uh, the seeing each other. So generally in this format, um, it's a webinar format as opposed to a Zoom meeting, slightly different. So usually we don't see each other. Some of the individual teachers, like when I teach my regular class on Mondays, I do give people the option to show their video and chat. We're a community that has been meeting together for quite a while. Um, so we connect sometimes before or after class, but here, Generally on this Friday class, we lead it, continue to lead it in webinar format. Okay. Great, so hopefully settling into your space with all your cozy things for our, for our yoga nidra practice later. Our approach today will be to start with a little sitting contemplation. We'll do some simple mindful movements. Then we'll come back into a seat to do some breath work and pranayama and then we'll move toward our yoga nidra practice. <clears throat> oh, great. We've got a bomber. <clears throat> Yuck. Hmm. Anybody know how to disable the chat feature? I would love to see that happening here. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. Thank you. <clears throat> Woo. <clears throat> Thank you, Julia.
seems so appropriate, honestly, for how I've been feeling lately. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh, I have heard Betsy had a similar experience much earlier in the um, pandemic. So, <clears throat> all right. <laughs> Mm. All right, rewind, here we go. All right, so let's start actually with movement because I think starting with sitting right now will not feel that effective for me. Um, and we'll get to the sitting after we shake it out a little bit. All right, so let's come into our space, all right, where we're standing. Yeah, thank you so much, Julia. <laughs> The beauty of the internet is very helpful in those moments. And now I learned a new tool, which hopefully I won't have to use again. <laughs> One of my university students is really bothering me. No. Okay, good. So I'm just going to stand wide here on my space. And a little wider than hip distance apart. All right, so I've got a nice steady base and I'm softening the knees here. So we're going to begin with a, what I, I really refer to this lately as sort of a more free form half sun salute. All right, so the movement sequence or the pattern might be familiar, but the movement sequence is a little different. So with my knees soft and then feet wide, I'll take a deep inhale. As you exhale, breathe out through the mouth and roll down through the spine. Uh, we'll stay down, swaying a little bit side to side. Breathing fluidly, feel free to continue to breathe out through the mouth in any point here. One more breath as you're swaying side to side, letting the knees bend as much as you like. And then begin to roll up through the spine, knees stay bent. And once I'm almost to the top, let the hands come toward the heart space. Open them up wide, deep inhale, lift the heart, a little back bend here, stay as you exhale. My knees are bent, heart and chin lifted. Then on your next exhale, round the back, knees are still bent, clasp the hands in front of you and gaze down. Deep breath in and out here, pull the navel in and broaden the space between the scapula. And then inhale, next breath in, sweep arms overhead. Exhale, bend the elbows, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Good, let's do it again, deep inhale. Exhale through the nose or the mouth, round down, bend the knees on the way down. Free form, sweep side to side or shake the shoulders, bend the knees any amount. And then we'll roll up through the spine. My hands come in front of the heart. Deep inhale, open the chest, knees bent, tailbone tipping back. So I'm tilting the pelvis forward. On your next exhale, round the back, hands come together. You can point the index finger and thumbs outward as you round the back. Breathe in and out, dropping the weight of the head. Next inhale, sweep up, straighten the legs. This time as we exhale, lean over to the right. Inhale, center. Exhale to the left. Inhale, center. We're gonna do it one more time. Exhale, bow forward. <sighs> Sway a little side to side. Letting the weight of the head go, soften the jaw. And then we'll roll up through the spine. One more time, deep inhale, open the arms, lift the chest, open the throat as the gaze gently lifts, stay for a breath. Next time you exhale, round the back, pull the belly in, clasp the hands, drop the head, take a breath here. Inhale, straighten the legs, extend arms overhead, long spine. Exhale, bend the elbows, pull the scapula together, open the chest. Good, and then we'll just shake the shoulders and the arms a little here. Good, 
Go ahead and let the hand shake. And just let the breath be free here as long as you're not holding the breath, any breath is fine. And I'm just gonna close this sequence of swinging the arms back and forth. You can cross the arms in front of you, alternate which arm goes on top. And you can allow the arms to dangle down by your side. Allowing the eyes to close. Notice the body in space. Be aware of your feet, hopefully feeling a little more rooted into the earth, the legs more stable and the spaciousness and freedom starting to emerge in the upper body around the shoulders and the heart. Relax the face, here and now. And slowly letting the eyes open Transition here to all fours. Have some blocks as well. <clears throat> so coming to all fours, you don't have to do anything fancy to get there. We'll just make our way down. Once you are on all fours, again, reconnect to your breath, breathing in and out through the nostrils now. Inhale and exhale, both through the nostrils. Then once you're on ta in table pose, we get to create circles here with the pelvis. And this movement can be yours, all right? It can be as small or as big as you like. I encourage you as you move here to allow it to grow in its own way. Some padding under the knees might feel nice for some of you. I'm at a spot where I've got double mat, so it feels good. But that rocking back and forth onto the knees, on the knees as you move in a circle might feel better with a blanket or something underneath. Jaw soft, keep going in the same direction. And feel free to close the eyes, pulling the attention a little more inward and tending to the movement and the cyclical nature of this action. Continuing to breathe freely and smoothly, allow the head to follow the movement of the spine. You don't have to hold the head in one space. One or two more in this direction. And then reverse in the opposite direction. Take your time. Make the movement yours and allow the breath to move freely through the body. And as you lean into this more circular pattern in the pelvis and the fluidity in the spine and the breath, just take a moment to remember this new cycle that has begun with the moon. Yesterday was the first day of the new lunar cycle. It comes as a reminder for us that things begin again. Nothing lasts forever. And every 28 days, we have this opportunity to start fresh, to clean the slate, to go into that dormancy or that darkness that is the dark moon. We can't see the fullness of the moon. And we start to rebuild. But letting the movement still. We'll do a few cat and cows here in table pose. Inhale, heart forward, broaden the collarbones so the scapula draw down the back of it. Exhale, round the back, drop the head. Inhale, tilt the pelvis forward, heart forward. Exhale, round the back. If you're familiar with Ujjayi breathing, you can coordinate that sound or the feeling of the breath in your throat now with your movement. Otherwise, continue to breathe in and out through your nostrils 
and letting the rate at which you breathe inform the rate you move. Two more cycles. Great, from here, I apologize that my pants are the same color as the mat. I know that's not the most ideal with our online yoga, so I'm just noticing that here. <clears throat> From here, if you have blocks, you can grab them. If you don't have blocks, it's okay, but if there is tightness in the hamstrings or the glutes or thighs today, it might be good to even just get a stack of blocks or two throw pillows even that you could fold up and use here. I'm going to extend the right leg forward and bend that right knee, all right? And then my blocks are right underneath the shoulders. Left knee is on the earth, on the mat. We'll move between this lunge and the half split. So bend into the front knee, allow the pelvis to shift toward the front heel any amount. Lighten the load on the blocks to the floor. Deep inhale. Exhale, shift the hips back. Pull the toes off the mat as you take hips back. Flatten the foot, walk it forward. Take the pelvis forward, lift the heart. Inhale. Exhale, shift the hips back. Straighten the front leg any amount. Pull the toes off the mat. Those of you with more mobility, hands on the earth. You flatten the foot, you can walk the hands more forward on the inhale and walk them more back on the exhale. Let's do three more. Mindful, slow movement, coordinating with the breath. Noticing how it feels to be in the body, sensation in the pelvis and the hips. Last one. We'll switch sides. Slide that right knee back to meet the left. Left foot steps forward, placing the foot flat on the earth. Find the breath here, deep inhale. Exhale, shift the hips back. Pull the toes off the mat. Fold forward any amount. Inhale, bend the front knee, flatten the foot, allow the pelvis to move toward the front heel. Exhale, shift back, draw the toes back. And keep going on your own. Every inhale, you're in this lunge variation. And as you exhale, in the half split variation. Good, let's slide the left knee back to meet the right. If you're using the blocks or any props, you can slide those out of the way here. Good, hands flat on the earth. Deep inhale, heart forward. As you exhale, tuck the toes, take the hips back and up, downward facing dog. Stay for one breath in downward dog. Bend the knees as much as you need to to get more length in the spine. Then lower the knees back to the earth, inhale. Exhale, round the back, sink the hips toward the heels, child's pose. Inhale, forward, back into table, gentle arch of the spine, send the sternum forward. Exhale, tuck the toes, root the hands, take the hips back and up, downward dog. One breath here, drop the head, soften the jaw. Lower the knees to the mat, deep inhale. Exhale, round the back, sink hips to the heels. This time you can stay in child's pose for an extra breath. This is the sequence we'll repeat a few times, moving between table and downward dog, back to table and into child's pose. And we're going to add chanting on the exhale. So the chant that we'll ch chant is Om So Hum. It'll sound like this, Om So Hum. If you're not in a space where you want to chant, maybe roommates or something with whatever your scenario is in your space, you could simply do it mentally. That silent repetition on the exhale. 
Om so hum, I am that. Find the breath again here. Take another resting breath in child's pose. As we move through this, remember chanting is one of the more powerful ways to shift how we feel and move prana, move energy in the body. Inhale, pull forward, table pose. We'll chant as we move into downward facing dog. Om so hum. As you stay in downward facing dog on that next exhale, silent repetition of the mantra. And then on the next inhale, lower knees to the mat. Exhale with the sound into child's pose. Om so hum. Inhale, pull forward. Chanting into downward dog. Om so hum. Staying with that silent mantra on the exhale. Lowering knees down, inhale, chanting into child's pose. Om so hum. Last one, inhale, pull forward. Om so hum. Stay silent awareness. Finally, lowering down, chanting back into child's pose at your own pace. Good. Notice the residual vibration. Notice how you feel and any shift that you've experienced in the last 20 minutes or so. Giving yourself this opportunity to practice, to reset, to reclaim, to begin again, just like the lunar cycle. And from here, we're going to move into a wide-legged squat. So the way I've been coming into this, you can slide the hands underneath the shoulders, come up. I've simply been coming into table and then sort of hopping my feet wide, right? So I've got kind of this wide-legged goddess stance in my legs, right? Like goddess pose, but my fingertips are coming to the floor, maybe even blocks. Toes point out, your feet might be off the mat here. Elbows come toward the inner thighs, perhaps. You can rock a little side to side, letting the inner leg line open. Soften the shoulders and the jaw. Good, now I'm going to widen the feet so my toes point forward. Here you might want to shift on your mat so your long way is on the mat if you prefer to have the feet supported. <clears throat> so now this wide-legged stance here, we're going to move side to side with a little bit of a twist. Walk the hands down through the center. Take the left hand over toward the right foot. Right hand to the low back as you twist to the right. Release, walk the hands through the middle over to the other side, right hand in front of the left foot, left hand on the low back, twist. Let's coordinate it with the breath. Inhale, down, walk the hands. You can track the blocks with you if you like. Exhale, twist right. Inhale, walk the hands down. Exhale, twist left. If you're using the blocks, you just bring them along. Take the hand to the low back. Exhale, spin the chest open to the right. Inhale, lower down, lift up, straighten the right arm as you twist to the left. Good. Keep going on your own, folding down in the center, then you straighten that arm as you twist to one side. And then the next time you come over toward the right side, stay there, either supporting that left hand with the block or it's on the floor. Right hand on the low back. I'll turn to the side here. Peel the right chest open. And we're going to move the head. Inhale, look down toward the left hand. Exhale, turn the gaze toward the sky. Inhale, look down. Exhale, draw the abdomen to, the, spin the abdomen to the right as you turn the head. Two more. Good. 
Good, slowly release, walk it through the center, take it to the other side. Right hand on the floor of the block near the left foot, left hand on the low back, root into the outer edges of your feet, press the chest toward the wall you're facing, peel the left chest back. Find the breath here, now looking down, inhale. Exhale, turn the gaze any amount toward the sky, turning the head. Inhale, look down and exhale, turn. Notice how the turning of the head cues the abdomen to spin a little more to the left. One more. And release, fold in the center. Heel toe the feet a little closer toward each other like you're coming more toward a traditional Uttanasana. Bend the knees, sweep the hands to your low back, lift up halfway. Stay as you exhale. Inhale, come all the way up with a flat back. And exhale, lower the arms. If you feel it all lightheaded, tuck your chin a little more. Bend the knees a bit and lift the pelvic floor. Take a moment to observe. Great. Okay, let's do a little work, more work for our neck and shoulders. I'm going to interlace my hands at the back here and then take the hands over, I'll mirror you. So take the hands over toward your right waist, right? And then rather letting that right arm kind of wing out, draw the right arm back so the elbow points more toward the wall behind you. Roll the right shoulder away from the ear. Find the breath. Keep the abdomen slightly lifted here. And then drop left ear toward the left shoulder. Continue to draw the right elbow back and toward the midline. And you can play around with the position of the head. It often feels good to me to look down rather than looking forward. Even sometimes it feels good to just tilt my head a little bit skyward. And find what feels good and even move between some of those spaces as well. Another movement I like is to trace the chin along the collarbone, so the chin tracing toward along that left collarbone. So around now, I'm starting to feel a little tingling in my, uh, what would be your right arm. And so at that point, that's a cue for me to get out of it, right? If I'm feeling some tingling in the hands or the arm at all, that's time to press the eject button, as T.S. Little would say, eject out of the pose. Good, going to the other side. I'll interlace the hands, take them over toward the left waist. Draw the right elbow, your left elbow back, roll the left shoulder down. And then drop the ear, right ear toward the right shoulder. Hmm, slow breaths here. Giving your Zoom neck a break, your computer neck a break, those shoulders. Ah, maybe grazing the chin along that collarbone or shifting the gaze down, forward or up. Find what feels best for you. And then slowly release, let the head come center. Now we'll just do a little shimmy and shake. Those of you that were with me last time I taught the community class, we did some shaking. I think I confess, I've gotten a lot more into shaking as a teacher now that I've gone on Zoom uh, than I might've been before, though I always like to shake, right? So let it shake out. <sighs> okay, coming toward the front end of your mat, if you aren't there already. We're going to do one round of a lunar salute, moon salute, Chandra Namaskar. Palms come to the heart. With this movement, a lot of times as we exhale, the base of thumbs is going to touch the eyebrow center and the heart center on our way down, right, with that exhale. Find the breath. And 
As you attune to the breath, feeling the body in space, sense this sequence here like a moving prayer to the moon or a moving prayer to the cycles in your own life, seasonal, daily, life itself, creative projects, the ebb and flow that is the natural form of cyclical and more spiral existence, which is really where we all are more than a linear line of action. Good, inhale, let the arms sweep down and up. As you exhale, base of the thumbs comes to touch the eyebrow center and heart center as you fold forward. Inhale in the forward fold, and as you exhale, lunge the left leg way back and lower the knee down. Inhale, sweep both arms up, gaze forward or down. Exhale, touching those points as the palms come together, eyebrow center, heart center. Take extra breaths as you need. Plant the hands, step back, downward dog. Find the breath here, deep inhale and exhale. Inhale, lower the knees to the mat. Exhale, sink hips toward the heels. Inhale, stand up on the knees, sweep the arms up. This time the exhale movement in the arms is different. Exhale, bend the elbows, bow forward towards child's pose. Maybe you can't get all the way there. Some of you might be able to bring elbows and forehead down. If you can't, extend the arms forward to a more traditional pose. Otherwise, base the thumbs at the back of the neck, stay for three breaths. Extend the arms forward if the elbows are bent. Pull the body forward all the way onto the belly. Inhale, baby cobra pose, float up. Exhale, through the knees, back into downward facing dog. Two breaths here. On your next exhale, step the left foot forward between the hands. Help it to get there or move through table if that's helpful. Lower the right knee down. Inhale, float up. Exhale, touching those points. As you bow forward, step the right foot up to meet the left. Find the breath here. On the inhale, sweep all the way up to standing. Exhale, touching those two points. Eyebrow center, heart center. Allow the eyes to close. Hands can stay at the heart or down by the side. Great. Good, let's fold forward, exhale. Coming down to all fours and then shift so that you come onto a seat, all right? Swing the legs forward, supporting yourself behind you. Take the feet mat width apart. <clears throat> we'll do a sort of windshield wiper twist here, but in a seated position rather than lying down. Those of you that were with me two weeks ago on Friday, I think we did this here, all right? So drop the knees over toward the right. You can free the left hand as you come forward. Come through the center, lean back, drop the knees to the left, twist a little to the left. Good, inhale, center, exhale to the right. Inhale, center, exhale to the right. Good, moving slowly and mindfully with your breath. If anyone is experiencing disc issues and their low back, please avoid this movement. And instead, I would maybe play around with some bridge pose, just simple up and down on your back, or some baby cobra movements. A couple more, moving side to side. Exhale to twist, hip mobility, inhale center, exhale twist. Good. Then coming into the center, make a diamond shape with the legs so that it's not so much bado kanasana where we pull the heels in, but my heels are a little further away from the body. 
holding onto the shins. If you want to put a little elevation under the pelvis, feel free. Good, slide forward, bow forward any amount. Slow the breath down, breathe into the back body and the abdomen. If you have blocks and they're accessible, for some of you, you might be able to put a block there or maybe two blocks and rest the forehead down. If you don't have blocks or this is even too, you're not gonna go that low, that's fine too. Stay for another three to four slow breaths. Follow the breath into the mid back and the low back, breathing into the kidney space. Kidneys house the adrenal glands, our stress hormones. So when we give lots of space in a movement like this to that area of the back, it helps to nourish the adrenal glands with prana, with ease. Good, slowly, slowly come up. Great, the last couple of things we do here before we transition toward our breathing practice will be on the belly. So before you go onto the belly, I actually want to show you here what we're going to do. Once I'm lying down, my arm is going to be in this movement, right? Which I would call cactus arm or goalpost arm. We'll do one arm at a side, one arm at a time. So I'm, I would be lying on the floor prone, right? With my elbow pretty much in line with the shoulder or maybe just above it and the palm will be flat on the floor. Okay, we're gonna move into a chest and shoulder opener here. So, Transition to come onto the belly. Then once you're there, take the right arm out, like I showed you in cactus, and turn the right cheek onto the floor. Left hand is right by the chest or the shoulder, there to support you. That right arm is at a right angle. If you want to look back at it, you can. Right arm at a right angle, elbow maybe just a smidge above your shoulder. Good. Then you press into the left hand and roll onto the outer right thigh and outer right hip. And you'll see I bend my top knee, my left knee is bending, just kind of coming behind me. That leg can also just drape behind you. It's kind of inconsequential. Let the weight of the head drop. There's a tendency to kind of hold our head up, drop the head down. If it can't land on the floor, place a pillow or a little folded blanket in that space. Breathe into the space where you're feeling sensation. This movement is so good to act as a counter pose for so much of our daily tasks. Cooking, typing, phoning, holding babies, carrying groceries, the steering, driving the car, whatever it might be. This helps to open up the chest and shoulder a great deal. Couple more deep breaths on this side. And then you'll roll through the center and take it to the other side. Left elbow comes in line with the shoulder or maybe just a smidge above it, left palm flat on the floor. Turn the head to the left, <clears throat> or the left cheek on the mat. Turn the head to the right, right hand by the chest. And as you're ready, roll onto the outer left hip and thigh. and deep in the breath. You may notice that the two sides are really different here, depending on which is your dominant arm or what sort of activities you've been doing or where you carry the tension in the body. Asymmetry is normal. One or two more breaths here. And then slowly come into the center. 
here we'll lie on the belly. So I'm going to take my legs about as wide as the mat, maybe a little wider, and externally rotate them. So my inner knee and inner foot, your inner feet, are on the floor. And then I'll prop myself up on the forearms a bit so my bottom rib cage and chest area is not necessarily on the mat. And then drop the head down toward the forearms. Alternately, you could just stack the hands and rest the forehead down. Okay, otherwise you're popping up on the forearms, bringing the forearms a little closer toward the body so that the lower rib cage, chest, breast area is off the mat and you drop the head down. Allow the eyes to close. One of my dear friends and regular students colleague, she refers to this pose as really one that reveals whatever tensions may be showing up in our body and mind, kind of this crocodile pose as it's called. There's nothing, you can't really hide from anything in crocodile pose. You see and feel it all, whether it's tension in the breath or the body or that disconnect in the mind. What I'd like you to focus on as we stay in crocodile for another minute or two is creating a continuous breath so that the inhale and exhale move seamlessly between one another. You can let go of ujjayi breathing here if you've been applying that during your asana practice and let the breath be quieter through the nostrils and not necessarily your deepest breath, or like you don't have to take in the most volume you're capable of, but the breath nourishes and cleanses with each cycle. Notice the natural expansion on the in-breath, contraction on the out. Another few breaths here. And then when you're ready, allow yourself to move towards child's pose as a little counter pose to this movement. And if child's pose doesn't feel good for your knees or your body for any reason, Flip over and lie on your back with the knees bent, feet on the floor. So from here, I'll have you come into a seat. You can grab a pillow or a cushion or get a chair. <clears throat> and before we transition into Yoga Nidra, we'll continue with our breath practice. We'll practice Nadi Shodhana. This is the alternate nostril breathing. So the mudra for Nadi Shodhana is with the right hand and the index and middle finger come down to the mound of the thumb and the thumb in, or ring and pinky fingers all face up, right? That can take some time just to get that, right? And then I bring the hands toward the face and the thumb blocks the right nostril and the ring finger blocks the left. And the whole time I'm doing this breath practice, I keep the fingertips connected to that 
little space right there where there's that ridge in your nostrils naturally. And I'll press in on one, press in on the other, but I don't have to remove the fingers from that space at all. Okay, if there's any congestion in one or both nostrils, I advise you to do this practice mentally. Otherwise, you'll follow with me. And if at any point while we are doing the Nadi Shodhana, if you start to feel agitated or anxious, the first step is to notice and then see if you can soften the approach a little bit. And then if not, just let go of the technique and breathe in a way that supports you. Okay, so sitting tall, lift the collarbones, lengthen the spine, allow the back of the neck to lengthen by dropping the chin in slightly toward the collarbone. Soften the shoulders. Take a smooth breath in and out. Again, inhale deeply. This time, exhale through the mouth, bend the right elbow, block the right nostril, and inhale through the left. The top of the inhale, you'll block the left nostril, slowly exhale out the right. And then breathing in right. And exhale left. That's one round. You'll inhale left. At the top, close the nostril, exhale out the right. Then breathe in right. And exhale left. Continue on your own. When we practice Nadi Shodhana, alternate nostril breathing, the breath is quiet. There's no audible sound. You're making the breath as quiet as possible. And here, as we did a couple times in practice, we make the breath continuous. There's no holding or stopping or breath retentions right now. Soften the jaw and the face. Continue on your own for a few more rounds. And again, if it's not feeling accessible due to congestion or whatever reason, you'll simply breathe freely and follow that pattern mentally up one side, down the other, like you're tracing an upside down V with your awareness. Remember to keep the heart vibrant and the chin drawing in a bit. This helps to quell the mind. Finish the round you're on and then do one more complete round, finishing with an exhale out the left side. Allow yourself to take a few adjusting breaths as you finish. Great. Okay, so here we'll start to set up the space for Yoga Nidra. <clears throat> What I would advise as you transition for yoga nidra is super duper comfort. Okay, so with what I have here, what I would do is take one blanket to lay down, which would go underneath me. If you're on carpet, you don't have to necessarily do that. But if you're practicing on a hard floor, it would definitely give yourself something soft underneath you. And then your pillow, which I don't have here, but if you're at home, you definitely got a pillow, I hope. Or your pillow is going to go in the space for your head. And then I'd actually get one more blanket here with what I have. I'll use the bolster under my knees, another little rolled up blanket under my ankles, and then I'd cover up with one more blanket. I'll show you what my setup would be as you're getting ready.
So I would have this holster under my knees or maybe some folded pillows under the knees. A rolled up blanket under the Achilles is really nice and luscious. And then once I lie down and I'm all ready, then I would cover up with a blanket and place something lightweight over the eyes. All right, good luck with yoga nidra. I'm just gonna rest here. <laughs> Right, so getting yourself cozy, comfortable, definitely something to cover the eyes if you are in a light-filled space, which I assume most of you are. <clears throat> and having something soft and supportive under the head. So yoga nidra couples so well with the new moon in that the new moon is this time of introversion. It's a time of darkness. It's a time when our energy levels often feel a little lower. Introspection and really the void, right? We think of the dark moon or the new moon as this kind of emptiness or darkness or the dormancy that is a natural part of the cycle. And Yoga Nidra takes us toward that space of the void. It takes us into who we are not, kind of peeling away some of the artifice and edifice so we relax deeply into that space of being rather than becoming or doing or action. So if you are newer to yoga nidra or depending on what your approach to yoga nidra has been in the past, I want to encourage you to set an intention to stay aware during this, that your body will rest deeply, but you're not going to fall asleep, but rather hover in this space where the body and mind are moving towards sleep, but your awareness remains aware. Making any last adjustments here so you feel the most comfortable, the most supported, and the body can choose to be still for the next 20 minutes or so. Soften the jaw. If something doesn't feel quite right, take the time to adjust and shift the position. Allow the arms to rest down by your side, palms face up, unless they feel more comfortable resting on the abdomen, you can let them rest there. Turn the awareness to the breath as you allow the body to open to the earth. The body completely supported by the earth. And for this first minute or so, we'll stay with a conscious breath. You breathe with intention, allowing the abdomen to expand as it receives the breath and the abdomen to soften as the body releases breath. Feel that with each exhale, you settle more into the earth, settle more into the support beneath you. Every inhale, a wave of healing, a wave of nourishment moves into the body and with each exhale, that nourishment and healing expands and cleanses the body and mind. Receive healing and nourishment through the in-breath and with the out-breath sense that presence expand through the body 
and cleanse all the tissues and cells. Your breath itself, its own balancing force for the ecosystem of the body and mind, both nourishing and cleansing. One or two more breath cycles here. Then you can let go of any shaping of the breath and allow the body to breathe on its own. Allow awareness to move deeper inward to observe sensation in the body. Witness, notice any sensations. There will be some sensations very familiar to you, recognizable, and other sensations that are more unique to this moment in time, to this time and space. Notice if there are any places where you might be holding or gripping still, remember that the earth herself is holding you. Allow yourself to be held by her. The more you can let go, the more you will be supported. Notice how the breath has changed and the breath is moving in just the right rhythm. The breath continues. And as you witness the breath, be especially mindful of the transition, the space that transitions from inhale to exhale, exhale to inhale. Be aware of the transition, how one glides into next, ebbing and flowing. Be aware of the continuity amidst transition. Be aware of the continuity within transition. Guide awareness to the space between the eyebrows. Sense and feel presence, light in that space. And if you like, you could repeat the mantra, Om Soham, 
like it pulses in that space. Awareness in the throat center, mantra, light, om, so, hum, just silent reverberation. Awareness in the right shoulder. As we move through these points, sense of starlight and the essence of the mantra pulsing in that space. Right elbow, right wrist, Tip of the right hand thumb. Tip of the index finger. Tip of the middle finger, om so ha. Ring finger. Middle finger. Right wrist. Elbow, shoulder, throat, left shoulder, elbow, left wrist. Tip of the left hand, thumb. Light, the tip of the index finger. Middle finger. Ring finger. Little finger. Left wrist. Left elbow. Shoulder. Awareness in the throat. Center of the chest behind the sternum. Light. Presence. Right nipple. Left nipple. Deep in the heart space, center of the chest, Om So Hum. Be aware of all of those points, illuminating the space of the body like a constellation. Be aware of the points and the space between the points. Allow awareness to move down through the soles of the feet or the tips of the toes. And as the body breathes in, feel awareness travel up the legs, join at the pelvis and up through the spine. As the body breathes out, awareness travels back down all the way to the soles of the feet, tips of the toes. Continue with this, a sort of sweeping breath on the in-breath from the tips of the toes to the crown of the head and on the out-breath down back toward the soles of the feet. The breath doesn't have to be deep or forceful here in any way. Rather, allow the breath to stay easy 
and your awareness sweeps through this pathway. Like a pranic bath of healing and ease. Up and down. On one of your next exhales, rather than traveling all the way down to the soles of the feet, let the exhale land at the heart space in the center of the chest. Sense the heart as a cave or a space in which you are able to rest. Be open to any image or sensation that arises in and around the heart or in and around the body that is your own nurturing, restful abode. Let go of trying or doing. Feel the body moving towards sleep the mind moving towards sleep, and yet awareness remains aware. You are held in rest. Slowly let attention drift back to the breath. Receive breath. If the body is calling you to continue to rest on the earth, Please feel free to stay here. The body is ready to transition. 
Slowly begin to deepen the breath, reawakening the physical body. And sensing this moment as your opportunity to begin again. A new cycle as you transition and reawaken. So either continuing to rest as long as you are able on the back in this state of restful awareness in your heart, or you can turn to roll onto your side, curling the knees in perhaps, making a little pillow with one arm underneath you or wedged under your pillow. Let the eyes closed pause here. Take a moment to reflect on your journey through your practice today. And listening for any wisdom that will guide you through the coming days or the next lunar cycle. Any insight. Remember to carry this piece with you always residing in you, remember that it's there. Namaste. Thank you all for joining, for being present. Again, I encourage you to continue to rest if the time and space allows you to do so. Hydrate well, and please reach out if you have any questions.